Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create plugins for Sonic the Hedgehog Project 06. Additionally, we're going to be taking our plugin we're making today and converting it into a state-specific plugin so that it doesn't run all the time and only on the specific state you want it to. Now the first thing we need is an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. This is basically where we're going to be writing our code. You can use whatever one you want, as long as it works with .NET. Personally, I prefer Visual Studio 2022. Once you have your IDE installed and ready to go, we can start getting things ready in P06. First, we need to install the mod loader. If you have an interest in writing plugins, I assume you already know how to install mods for this game, so I'm assuming you already have the mod loader ready to go. There is one thing we'll need that makes our job much easier, That'll be Unity Explorer. You can download it from the link down in the description. Once you're on this page, you'll need to scroll down, go to the section that says Melon Loader, and we want ML 0.5 Mono. What this means is that we're using Melon Loader 0.5, and that our game is a mono game. Once you have Unity Explorer downloaded, you'll have this zip folder. You'll need to extract mods and user libs into your P06 folder. So you'll just grab them, drop them in next to the exe. Once you have the game open and ready to go, you'll see something new pop up. So across the top here and over here, we have Unity Explorer. What this will do is allow us to see how scenes are built in the game and allow us to interact with them. So what we're going to be making is a simple mod that lets us run a lot faster. So once we get into the level, we're just going to pause and we're going to go over to the Object Explorer. This is just a list of every object that's currently loaded. So what we want to do is come down to Sonic New Clone, go to Sonic New, and now we can see all the variables that control how Sonic plays. So we're going to scroll down until we get to the variable we need, which will be playerbase.maximumspeed. And this is the value the game uses to determine how fast the character can go. Now due to the way the game works, we can't actually affect this value through Unity Explorer. Now if we look at the code for the game, we can see why this doesn't work. Now to look at the game's code, we can use another tool called DNSpy, linked down in the description. So once we have DNSpy installed, we're going to drag the game's assembly-c sharp file into the assembly explorer here. And once that's done importing, let's we'll open that up go down to the dash and then we're going to go down to Sonic New. Now we're going to search for the maximum speed and this is how the game determines what the character's max speed is. So we can see using blue gem, which is the speed up gem, using the walk switch, which is just a true or false that determines is the character walking or running, and then one more else. And then we can also see that it always takes into account a Sonic New Lua. Now this is a Lua script that the game has built in that we cannot directly affect. So the reason we can't change maximum speed in UDD Explorer is because we cannot change the Lua. However, through code, we can change this. Now one thing to note here is that all the characters are built on top of a player base object, and this is what actually stores the maximum speed variable. So when we're referencing the character, we want to reference player base. All right, so now that we know what we need to affect, let's get into Visual Studio and start creating our plugin. When you open Visual Studio, you're going to be greeted to a window similar to this. What we're going to do is create a new project, We'll go to C Sharp. Then we'll want to create a class library. Now we need class library .NET Framework. Doing a regular C Sharp library won't work properly. And the reason for this is because we need specifically .NET Framework 4.7.2. The non.NET version doesn't contain 4.7.2. Now I'll just name this P06 speed plugin and then we'll hit create then we'll get a new window like this 
Well, the first thing I like to do is rename class one to plugin. You don't have to do this, but it just makes it a bit easier to understand what you're looking at. Now we'll need to right click on references, add reference, hit browse, and navigate to your P06 installation. First thing we're gonna do is go into the Melon Loader folder, grab zeroharmony.dll and melonloader.dll, click add, browse again, go to your Sonic the Hedgehog data folder, go to manage, we're gonna want assembly C sharp. And we're also gonna grab Unity Engine and Unity Engine core module. We're gonna hit okay. And now we have references to all those libraries. That means that we can just interact with those libraries directly. Now we're gonna come up here, going to add a new line, and we're gonna type in using melon loader. Then we'll come down next to plugin, type colon melon mod. Now we're gonna expand properties, go to assembly info, we're gonna add using PO6 speed plugin or whatever you named your project, and using Melon Loader. Now we're gonna add a bracket, assembly colon, Melon Info. Then inside parentheses, we're gonna put type of plugin, or whatever you named your other file. Put a comma, quotation marks to say that this is a string or just a line of characters. We'll type in speed plugin, another comma, then another string for the version number, and one more string for the author name. Now we're done with assembly info, we'll save that and we can close it. We don't need to mess with it anymore. All right, so back in plugin, we're going to add a private player base called player. And we're also gonna create a second variable. This will be private bool is playing. All right, now we're gonna create a little function. This is gonna be public override void on scene was loaded. So whenever a scene is loaded, this function will run. And what we're gonna do now is go if game manager dot instant dot game state equals game manager dot state plane. So if we are in a stage, we're gonna set is playing to true. Else if Game manager dot instant dot game state equals menu or the game state equals result. We want is playing to be false. So we're setting our boolean that whenever we're in a stage we are playing. If we're in the menu or we get to the result screen, we're no longer playing. We don't need to run this anymore. That's all we really need to do here. Next, we're going to have an on late update. So this will run every frame after all other code is run. And what we're going to do here is we are going to set the maximum speed value here. Now first thing we want to do is check if we're in a level. If we're in the menu, if we're in a result screen, we don't really need to set anything. So if not is playing, return. If we're not playing, we don't want to run any code. Now we need to set our player. So if player equal, equals null, player equals game object dot find object of type player base. So now if we don't have a player object, we're gonna try and find it. And we're gonna do one more little line. If the player still does not exist, stop running any code. This isn't necessarily the optimal way to do this, but for our purposes, it'll be just fine. So now we have our player. 
Now we just need to set the speed. So things are gonna get a little bit weird here. So going back to DNSpy, if we take a look at the maximum speed variable, we can see that it's internal. That means only the assembly this comes from can modify it. So normally, we cannot change this value. However, there is a way around this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come up to the top, add using system.reflection. Now we're going to add type t equals player.get type. Then field info field equals t.get field. Inside parentheses, we're going to put maximum speed, then a comma, binding flags instance, binding flags non public. So now we're able to read that variable even though it's not public to us. We're also going to add the get field and get property binding flags. They can just help out a little bit sometimes. Internal stuff can be a little finicky. Now that we have the variable, all we need to do is set it. So we're going to put field.setValue. We're going to put our player. And then our value will be 50. So this will be double Sonic's normal speed. We'll save that. We'll set this to release. We'll go to build and build solution. Once you see it succeeded down here, the build is finished and you can add the DLL to your game. So now navigate to wherever you saved your project. Go into the folder with the same name, bin release. Then you'll see a DLL with your project name on it. In your PF6 folder, you'll go to mods and then drag your new DLL inside. Now that we're in game, you can see that we can run quite a bit faster than normal. So we know that our code is working properly. And that's all it really takes to make a PO6 plugin. Now what if you wanted to make this a stage plugin where you attach a script to an object in the stage editor? Well, doing that is fairly simple. We'll go to PO6 speed plugin, right click, click add, and class. We'll set our name to test script. We'll add using Unity Engine. Then add mono behavior here. Then we'll copy our code from the plugin, paste it in here. We're gonna get some errors. What we wanna do, delete override. That'll make late update work. We can get rid of the base out on late update. We can get rid of is playing. Then we'll just need to add one variable, public player base player. And now we can see we have no errors. Now we can build this again. And we'll add the DLL it generates into our mods folder. Now we need a DLL for the stage editor. However, if we try to bring this in as it is, it will have errors and won't work. That's because it's referencing assemblies that don't actually exist in the editor. We're gonna come over here to references and select Harmony, Assembly C Sharp, and Melon Loader. And then we're just gonna delete them. All we want left is the Unity Engine and Unity Engine Core module. As you can see, deleting those caused some errors over here, and that's fine. What we're gonna do is just delete it. When we're bringing the DLL into the stage editor, we don't need the code, we just need the scripts. So once that's all deleted, we'll save, come over to plugin, going to select it all, and press Control K, Control C to comment it. Basically rendering this file empty. We'll save that. Then we'll come over to assembly info, and we want to comment out melon loader and the melon info. We'll save that, and then we can rebuild it. Drag the new DLL you built into the stage editor, and it should load just fine. And then you can drag your scripts onto your files, and they'll just kind of work. And so that's the basics 
of creating a plugin for P06.